Uh, but I didn't get nervous until I came over the a hill on the highway and I started seeing all the production signs. I'm like, oh, this might be bigger than I thought. <laughs> and I went on the street, there's like semi grip trucks lining, you know, like a half mile on this road and like a giant tent for craft services and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? And yeah, yeah, I felt sick to my stomach. <laughs> uh, but they had a 55 person crew, it was huge. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Oh, my gosh, we have an amazing episode today like i'm speechless y'all really this is such a great episode this is like peak lone star plate right here um we have a very phenomenal guest um someone i respect uh from my own industry the restaurant industry so much uh when i moved to austin in 2014 um he was someone that was just like a god really it was like it's still you know it's like everyone wanted to be him and have what he had and not just in austin in a lot of places i'm talking about aaron franklin that's right one of the greatest most influential pit masters in the united states some could say the world um won a james beard award in 2015 um and it was the only time okay uh and the, the first time that any that a pit master had been nominated for barbecue and that they had won, right? So like both. He he got nominated, that was crazy, and then he won. So, and when you've had his barbecue, you realize, look, this guy has a line. There's not many places, right, that have a line like this. Like just this inevitable line. It's never stopped. It is a line all the time. And they're gonna be reopening uh full dining room, all of that, uh, you know sort of like pre-COVID, uh, in September. So very exciting. They'll be back. Um, so obviously COVID, you know, affected things. And we talked about that a little bit in the interview. Um, this was a great interview. I try to cover a lot of things guys. Okay. So like, boom, keep it. I kept it at an hour. Okay. You know, sometimes we do those epic podcasts. Like I'm trying to sort of stray away from that a little bit, to be honest with you, those are getting too long. So I'm trying to keep it concise and, you know, keep these conversations flowing and, you know, I try to cover a lot of topics with them. I mean, honestly, I could have talked to him for a long time uh, about barbecue and so many other things. There's so many other things to talk to him about. So I feel like I got a few things out of him. He's, you know, never talked about before. I don't know. Um, you know, he doesn't do too many interviews, uh, especially like this with the podcast, but you know, of course, look, he's got a new project opening up, uh, in, uh, in Dallas here. Uh, it's called Laura. There's already one in Austin. Um, and it's one of the best places to go to, right? He teamed up with, uh, chef Tyson Cole and, um, yeah. And by the way, we're going to have Tyson Cole on as well. So both chefs coming on amazing, right? So pff, unbelievable. So yes. Uh, but we got Aaron, uh, first and we'll get Tyson, um, here in a little bit. So, all right. Um, yeah, it, you know, it was just such a great episode, man. So yeah. So Laura's opening up Dallas. Uh, it's like a, um, you know, Japanese smokehouse. That's how they describe it. Uh, and it's phenomenal. I've had the food. Of course, it's it's absolutely phenomenal. Let's be real. Um, yeah, it was so cool. Look, he talked about uh, his master class that he gave. Aaron Franklin did. He talked about uh, Chef being in the movie Chef with John Favreau. There's some great insight into that. Great insight into the master class, y'all. For real. Um and uh, he talked about, you know, Loro and cooking and barbecue and, you know, just some crazy things. Uh, you know, for instance, like he hasn't really cooked at home barbecue at home for himself. Like 10 years, he said. Some crazy like that. How crazy is that? You know, you would think. Right. But the guy, he's a workaholic, man. That's why he has what he, has. he loves working. He dedicates a lot of time and he's just, you know, very precise with everything. So anyway. 
you know, great, great interview. Really enjoyed it. He's uh, someone I look up to and respect, right? He's like an Anthony Bourdain for me uh, in that sense. Um, so to be honest, I was a little nervous talking to him. You know, I've talked to a lot of people on this podcast, right? But again, he's someone from my industry. It's like, it's, it's, it's a different thing than like talking to some like famous actor or famous musician. I'm not in those industries. So like, for me, it's just a person. But <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, like some like high end chef, like, Oh shit. Like that's, I don't know. It's just like, it's a little more intimidating for me. Uh, but look, he was so cool. Like he is, he just laid back, had a great, again, great conversation, talk barbecue himself, the Laurel project coming up and working with Tyson. Awesome. So yeah, you guys are really going to enjoy this interview. Uh, you're going to learn a lot about him and, um, yeah, it was great talking to him about an hour. So it was a good conversation. Uh, and he also gives some shout outs to the places he likes to eat. So, uh, Stay tuned to the end for that. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Find out where Aaron Franklin likes to eat. Uh, so, okay, look, let's get to it, right? But before we do, quick word from our sponsor, Texas Real Food. Got to keep the lights on, y'all. We'll be right back. Hi, I wanted to talk to you about what's on the Texas Real Food site that's more than just putting in your zip code and finding, you know, the coolest butcher, farmer's market, restaurant around you. There's also other resources on the site, recipes, articles, and one in particular is called the Texas Mom Blog. It's awesome. Faria Khan is writing these beautiful articles. You can really learn a lot about Texas, just giving you a lot of other things to think about, food, family, everything behind that goes into food as well. So just different topics and uh, conversations. Definitely something worth checking out as well. All right, back to the show. Okay, what do you say we get to this episode? I'm ready. All right, uh, before we do, real quick, social media. Please check us out online, Lone Star Plate TX, and our YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. If you are enjoying it and hit that like button, that really helps a lot. So thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel and the podcast. Really do appreciate it. Okay. So look, let's get to the uh, interview. I know that's what you're waiting for. Enough of me blabbing. So Mr. Aaron Franklin, Chef Aaron Franklin, Pit Master Aaron Franklin, the boss of barbecue Aaron Franklin. Enjoy. Well, listen, Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it, brother. Heck yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. This was originally going to be uh, Chef Tyson as well was going to be joining us. So we're going to do a separate interview with him. So it's just me and you one on one today. Cool. Well, yeah, I'm, uh, I am. I'm off for chatting. Let's do this. Um, so, Aaron, look, well, well, what do you prefer? You prefer Chef, Pitmaster, Aaron, Mr. Franklin? Oh, Aaron's just <laughs> fine, but all those things are probably applicable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a label. I can just be myself. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Well, I'm from the restaurant industry myself, so I know, uh, you know, the tiers and, and how it works. I uh, want to make sure I'm respectful. So, yeah, anyway. I, I, you know, I, I've been called so many things over the years. I could be, you know, head toilet plunger, <laughs> um, you know, dishwasher, totally. chef yeah. dude, maintenance guy, builder, <laughs> whatever. Bar- whatever. The, the guy with the barbecue, do it all. Do it all. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's awesome. That's funny. Oh, I would imagine you've been shouted uh, all kinds of different things. Um, Terrible things. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah like to, not always good. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's how you know you've made it. Listen, let me tell you something. Um, well, look, we're here to talk about mainly about you have this new collaboration with Tyson. Well, new to the Dallas area. It's going to be opening up in Dallas called Loro. Uh, there's mm-hmm. already one in Austin there, uh, which has been going, I guess, what, a few years now? It- oh, gosh, my timelines are always super messed up, but I think probably about three years. Yeah, two or three years. OK, yeah, yeah right on. We, we open in March. Um, right at South by Southwest, I believe three years ago. Got it. Got it. So, yeah. So now it's coming to Dallas here and you guys collaborated. Actually, the right? Dallas one is already open. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, July Opened 5th. A couple weeks ago. Yep. Right. July 5th. That's right. I, I actually went to the, um, you guys had like this little like press junket thing in the parking oh, lot before, before yeah, it was yeah. finished, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, I actually got distracted playing cornhole the whole time. Man, so my apologies. 
Yeah. <laughs> my wife and I couldn't let it go. We were just over there. We pretty much hogged it the entire time. So uh, my apologies to everyone else who was waiting. Yeah, I noticed somebody was kind of bogart in the cornhole. That was me. That was me. Uh, that was me. I'm sorry. I have walked over and said hi. <laughs> no, no, please. It's the opposite. I should have gone over uh, and said hi. But I, listen, I was losing and I had to, you know, make a comeback. So anyway, let's talk about this concept. Um, what what style of food are you bringing, right? This is your first collaboration with another chef, right? To make, uh, uh, you know, to open a restaurant. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, you know, I mean, if, you know, and, and Dallas already has an Uchi um, and, yeah. you know, with Uchi upstairs and stuff like that. So if you imagine, you know, Uchi was kind of backing out of the driveway and, and bumped into a parked car that was named Franklin Barbecue. Uh, <laughs> and then the bumpers kind of got tangled up a little bit. And hence you have Loro. <laughs> That's the coolest explanation for a, a restaurant I ever heard. Uh, I love that. Well, I just made that one up. I'm, I'm sure I'll come <laughs> up with something better here in a few minutes. Um, that was but really, you know, it's so it's an Asian smokehouse. Um, and nothing new there. I mean, they've been around for quite a while. It's not like we invented anything. Um, but it's kind of... You know, like Uchi's always been like kind of light and, and super bright foods and and really, you know, big on the acidity and kind of cleanliness and, and stuff like that. Um, and on the other end of the spectrum, sort of, you know, we deal with really clean execution of smoked meats, you know, just like straight salt and pepper, really clean flavors, no dirty smoke or anything like that. Um, and then, yeah, we just kind of combine forces a little bit. So there's you know, it's definitely more Asian than barbecue, but there's a lot of smoke stuff on there. You know, we've got like a smoked bavette um, on the menu. We've got a, a burger with a brisket jam on there. We've got brisket at night. We've got smoked turkey like Franklin barbecue. Um, doing ribs, do prime rib here in Austin. I'm, I'm sure we'll be doing it in Dallas pretty soon too um, on Mondays. But um, yeah, kind of just, wow. you know, we just all picked our favorite parts of, of both places. Oh, that's awesome. So if people are familiar with your barbecue, what sort of differences are they going to experience going there? Uh, to Franklin? Yeah, to, to Loro. I mean, if you know, if they're used to your barbecue, right? If people are like, oh, it's Loro, must be just like Franklin. What what yeah, sort well, of difference? Good question. You know, actually, when I still get this all the time, it's it's weird. Uh, people always ask like, oh, yeah, so you cook everything at Franklin barbecue and then just drive it over to Loro? Like, <laughs> you no. Know, no, you're eating Loro brisket, not yeah. Franklin brisket. It's, yeah. you know, it's painfully similar, but, you know, we can never replicate exactly what we do here at Franklin Barbecue um, just because, you know, we built the cookers. Everything's like so specific, um, you know, but we kind of take we cook the same briskets. We use about the same seasoning, same techniques and everything, um, but different cooker, different people. It's different brisket. There's no way around yeah. it. Oh, that's interesting uh, way to think about it. So like if you were to ever open a second location of barbecue, you it would be really hard to replicate what you have at your original location. Yes, it would be wow. very difficult. Wow, that's very interesting. Wow, that's that's actually that's quite interesting. So when you see these barbecue chains, it's like, hey, listen, they're not getting consistency right across the board. Well, There's no way. I mean, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. Sure, sure. Um, Not that it's bad. It's just going to be different at every place, right? Yeah, so every barbecue, yeah. You know, and, that, and that changes, you know, with, with any any barbecue place. I mean, you know, here at the at Franklin, um, you know, we can tell if there's a trimmer that worked on Thursday that trimmed raw brisket. And then, you know, different guy did the poll, different guy did the first part of the cook. You can, I can look at pictures and I can almost pinpoint who worked each of the shifts. Oh, wow. Like if you get That's... that detailed... Yeah, there's wow. a difference. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I doubt man. anyone would really notice. You're like, I don't know. It <laughs> tastes like smoky, fatty, salty meats. Must be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why you're who you are. You know what I mean? Because you take that attention uh, to detail. You know. Uh, wow, that's interesting that you'd be able to point that out. That that would be an interesting experiment, uh, a little challenge for you to like get some pictures and actually do that. Have you? I do it every day. Cool. Uh, that's awesome. We have a, a text stream going on every day where we get certain shots of certain briskets throughout lunch and zoom uh, in and analyze them and give feedback, and then we all talk about it and stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Wow, what a great way to use technology. Uh, to be honest with you. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. What other ways are you guys looking to innovate, uh, either at Laura or Franklin's with technology? Is that something you guys sort of stray away I think from? That's about as far as I'm willing to go. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, cause there's all these like apps and this and that, right. That you can yeah, add to your, thing, though, 
is like once you get into like barbecue and the nuance of of human touch and the craft of of making food and stuff like that, you just can't replace humans with technology. I mean, you, we could use technology to to help us, obviously, you know, with the pictures and apps and you know, obviously, you know, front of house stuff's a, a lot different. But once you really get to cooking it, you know, if you don't have the touch or the feel or can't taste it and and kind of know what's going on, I'm afraid technology just can't help there. Yeah. Wow. That is interesting. I mean, you, you know, there's, there's all this like lab grown meat, uh, you know, this impossible burger, this burger. I don't know all the different names of all the stuff. Do you, ah, feel, do, you, do you feel threatened by that in any way? Like as a, you no, know, a meat, a meat awesome. connoisseur. Okay. Right on. I was curious yeah. about that. Big fan. I mean, I don't really, I'm not into like processed foods and stuff, you know, they sure. have to go through a lot of transformation. Um, but gosh, darn, I love vegetables. And I think, you know, some of these, you know, non meat, um, I guess, sort of replacements, you know, like based on like mushrooms and stuff like that, man, I think yeah. that stuff's super awesome. Big fan. That's awesome. I'm really happy to hear you say that, to be honest with you. I feel the same way. Um, you know, it, it's I've had several farmers on the podcast to just talk about like, this what's sort of a new term that's being thrown around, but it's not new to them, which is regenerative agriculture. Mm -hmm. Right. So this idea, yeah, absolutely. The way it should be, it's like, yeah, just normal. Right. It's like, it's like when they say organic food, it's like, why are we not just calling it food? You yeah, know, it's, exactly. it's it, that scares me that, you, that we have to separate. Well, um, it's, it's sad that our food system has gone so far in the wrong direction that we have to like start coming up with terms and ways yeah. to act the way it should be. <laughs> yeah, um, totally. totally. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm sure you've been tempted. Um, I mean, I've seen now your like sauces, different things of Franklin's that's out in the markets. But originally, like when I moved to Austin in 2014 and opened my food truck, I, that stuff, your stuff wasn't around like that, you know? And I thought, uh, well, you already, you already big back then. I, I don't know. It just feels like it took a little while for you to get it going. Was there? Yeah. Well, we don't like to push on any of that kind of stuff. You know, we're, yeah. we don't really do anything until we're excited about it or, or have time to give it our, our real attention yeah. and stuff, you know, that and makes it, sense. I think, you know, one thing that kind of has always kind of bothered me and, and Franklin barbecue is very much not like this. You know, it's like you have like, you know, a little restaurant, make sure the little restaurant's really good. And then, you know, start branching out and like, oh, I'm getting excited about sauces. Want to make a sauce. Oh, I want to make a steak rub. Hey, let's make charcoal. That could be fun. But, you know, if you rush all that stuff, then you're just spread too thin and you can't you can't really make any of it very good. Yeah, no, that absolutely like makes it. sense. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, that makes perfect sense. But, you know, with that much attention, normal people, especially anyone who's gotten into the industry, you know, when you when you start a food truck, right, the idea is I'm going to go past this food truck into a brick and mortar. At least that's most. Yeah, I don't think anybody's thoughts. looking to stay in a food truck forever. Yeah. yeah. That's a hard way to maintain. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Great way to start, though. Absolutely. Uh, some of the toughest years of my life, for sure. Hardest work ever, um, you know, running the food truck, for sure. Um, but, the, you know, that idea, if, if things start coming your way, it's very it can be very tempting to be like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. Let's do yeah. that. Let's do it's that. It's a right? lot like, harder to say no than it is to say yes. I would have. Absolutely. Especially someone in your position. That's great to hear that, you know, you have that sort of discipline. I wouldn't have. If someone would have came to me with Boca, I would have put it on, on like, a thong. Yeah, for everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. But that's why I matter. That, that's why I do this now. This is my I replaced the knife with the mic. You there know, you go. That that's all it that's all it became. So um, no, that's great, man. Well, look, let's talk a little bit about this um this Loro collaboration. I'm curious, like how you and Chef Tyson you know, came to collaborate on this and why, why this? Well, you know, I mean, kind of like what we're talking about, you know, you, you kind of get your, uh, your original, the OG stuff going like, oh, it might be fun to maybe do something one day. Hmm. I don't know. Um, you know, but those guys, they opened up Uchiko here in Austin the same year that we opened up Franklin barbecue 2009. Um, and I think around then they actually started kind of thinking about, you know, like smoke house, smoky, Oh, wow. You know, a version of that. And that, you know, quite a few years went by. Um, they were kind of talking about it a little bit. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, I guess maybe, you know, just kind of like anybody, just kind of waiting for the right time. Like, yeah, we're not ready. But, you know, you can always think about stuff for a long time and kind of, you know, get the puzzle pieces in line. Um, like a good intro to Game of Thrones, of course. <clears throat> <laughs> <Yeah>. But, um, <laughs> You know, why so Chef kinda, Tyson? Uh, but why him? Why what was there another well, chef? So they or? were kind of thinking about it. And then I did a, a dinner, a ramen night up in Dallas at um 
uh, top knot, I believe, but what Uchiba was. Got it. Um, so I did it like a Monday, Monday ramen night. And, um, you know, it was super good. And I was talking to John Baydale, you know, with hi, he was like, Hey, so we've been, you know, kind of thinking about this thing. You want to grab coffee tomorrow morning? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm kind of, I'm starting to get excited. Franklin barbecue is super stable, you know, getting, getting kind of maybe perhaps a little antsy to do something. Um, so we kind of talked about it like, man, this could be great. And like, well, we want to do a smoke Asian smokehouse. I'm like, that sounds like a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, I certainly can't, can't be there to, to really work every day or, or do very much, but man, that sounds like a really fun project. And then we all just kind of started getting together and, you know, when we started kind of working on dishes and stuff in the kitchen at Uchiko here in Austin, um, it became really, really obvious that it was like, Oh, we were all just getting really excited about it. So we just kept going and, you know, one thing led to another and gosh darn, we ended up with our, our very first little Loro down on South Lamar. That's awesome. No, that's awesome. I can imagine being a, a fly on the wall during R and D. Uh, it must've been delicious just tasting all these different things and trying out all kinds of different dishes, right? Yeah. Like, super fun. It, you know, there's so many talented people uh, working in, in the high kitchens. Um, everybody kind of pitched in their little thing. It's like, I got this dish. I've got this dish. Hey, I want to do a bavette. Hey, let's figure this out. Um, so it's really a lot of fun just kind of collaborating with everybody. Awesome. And they were like, yeah, Aaron's bring a barbecue, right? There was like, like no, well, I, that was probably yeah. why they really wanted to be involved. <laughs> yeah. Like, they bring us a biscuit after the hours. <laughs> What's your second best thing you make besides barbecue? Outside really of barbecue. Boiling water. <laughs> <laughs> Um, pretty much anything on a grill. Um, I've gotten really good at cooking fish. Okay. You know, proteins usually. Um, I don't know. I cook most anything, I guess. Um, meat and fire is kind of my fave though. Um, of course, of course. Absolutely. I don't know. I was curious, you know, Hey, I like making pasta with my you know, family on Sundays. I don't know. You know, maybe there's some random extra. No, no, nothing too random. Really. Whatever the kid wants to eat for dinner. Um, you know, we don't cook at home. Maybe every six weeks we might cook at home. Oh, really? Um, it's not oh, very wow. often. Wow. Um, not much time left in the day. Sure. It comes out and it's like, oh man, well, let's just get, I'll just pick up something. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I really don't have too good of an answer for that. I don't think I've cooked at home. Man, I bet you it's been three months. Easy. What, when's the last time you barbecued at home? Oh, uh, about 10 years no shit well wow. because it takes a long time and i yeah. don't remember i don't think i've been home in 12 consecutive hours in the last 10 years that's like insane. usually get home late go to bed get up go do some stuff have a cup of coffee pop in i'm just kind of in and out making the rounds all day so yeah it's it's kind of it would be pretty tough to pull up being at one place for more than about three or four hours Wow. That's honestly, I was not expecting you to say that. That's fascinating. 10 yeah. years. That's crazy. I mean, that's, I've cooked barbecue in the last of 10 course, years. Of course. Sure, of course. Of yeah. 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 And also, mean, yeah. I never know when like, I go home and cook barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> it's right behind me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you're just like, you know, it's just me and this brisket and nobody Man, else. I didn't get it all. work. I need to yeah, go home. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> totally not enough. Oh man, that's funny. Well, that's, I mean, that's a solid point for sure. Well, okay. So with this new, uh, well, you know what I was going to ask you about that? We're talking about barbecue and grills. What do you think about these like pellet grills? Um, you know, I, I maybe they're, they're, they're not my favorite. I will say that, um, again, kind of back to that technological thing. It's hard to replace sure. human touch with technology. Um, but I will say nowadays, those pellet cookers can really put out some great food. I mean, there, there are a few out there and they just keep getting better, you know, cause it, it, in the early days when they first started coming out, they all had like a really like dirty, like sooty smoke, really oil soluble things were over smoked um, and the fires didn't burn. Right. Maybe the pellets have evolved. Well, actually probably all of it's really evolved. I'm sure. Uh, but I think they burn hotter and cleaner um, and it, they're really putting out some good stuff. I know there's a couple brands out there that make some really nice pellet cookers. Um, again, not my favorite thing. Cause I really, the sure. thing that it, that got me into barbecue was just the, you know, the art of it, you know, and if you take that out, um, but I will say as I get older, I, I certainly appreciate a good night's sleep. Um, <laughs> yeah. so I think 
Yeah. Give me a couple of years. I might be a I might be a pellet cooker guy. There might be like Franklin pellets, right? Franklin pellets coming out soon. No, nah, I don't think so. No, I don't no. think we're going there. <laughs> no, I hear you for sure. Uh, I, mean, yeah, what, I mean, what, I think a, a time what, what is a for pellet cookers and, and all that kind of stuff, though. I think you know, if you want to be able to go to bed, still make some pretty darn good food, or or start something in the morning, go to work, come home. Um, I think they're great. I think there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but. You know, maybe the greatest that something like that could get might not be quite as the absolute greatest you could achieve with like a real fire, but a lot more consistent, too. So that's the difference, really. It's the fire that it creates and the heat. Yeah, it, it's it, usually it's the fire because what those pellet cookers do, you know, you've got this highly compressed processed wood situation and then they kind of smolder. So they use like convection fans and stuff like that and a little heat plate. It'll smolder, it'll smoke, and it'll force the air. So it's trying to replicate the combustion of a natural fire. Um, ah, you know, okay. and in that process, it changes the chemical makeup of that smoke. Got it. Got it. I mean, they're everywhere, right? I just constantly hearing people. Oh talk man, about and them. and you know, with the pandemic and stuff, I mean, yeah, all that kind of stuff has gone through the roof. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I listen to Joe Rogan a lot and he's constantly talking about it. I mean, it's yeah, like, I need to talk that talk to that guy about his pellet cooker. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> absolutely. You need to go on there and say, I keep is, meaning to reach out to him. Absolutely. Oh, man, that would be such a great episode, man, to ha- to see you on there for sure. Um, yeah, he, I mean, that just seems to be the big thing. And I'm just thinking, oh, is this the right way to go? Because once it takes off, right, it becomes too big to fail. Once enough people have these things, it's like it's not going to go anywhere, you know, so. You have to lean into it or I don't know what we do. But don't um, fight it too hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's I mean, that's, you know, I'm, t- you know, talking to some of my other chef buddies, just how, like how quickly the industry is changing. And, you know, it's such a pivotal time in the industry. And then the pandemic didn't help any, uh, obviously, uh, in any way. But in some ways, it helps some restaurants oh. and places like adapt and like figure out other ways to serve things in some ways. Yeah, I, I think it helped a little bit with that. I mean, the pandemic, no doubt, was super hard on on everybody, especially, you know, those in the in the service industry. Um, but I kind of look at the at the pandemic as possibly a catalyst for for making changes for the better in the industry. You know, I mean, Agreed. I think it's kind of, you know, made a lot of like, you know, pay issues come to light, insurance, quality sure. of life um, kind of stuff for the industry. So I, I certainly don't think that's a bad thing at all. Yeah, that's a great point. I'm always looking for something positive. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, uh, shout out to G. King, Chef G. King here in Dallas, uh, Sloan's Corner. Uh, We did a podcast. Check that out. We'll put a link in the description um, that we talked about that as well. So for anybody out there that wants to listen to that episode. uh, Yeah, couldn't agree more, Aaron, uh, to be honest with you. Um, You know what I was going to ask you about? Do people invite you to backyard barbecues? They must be intimidated, right? Like, who wants to yeah. cook for you? Who wants to cook <laughs> barbecue for you? Um, that must you know, be tough. We did a friend tells us for dinners and stuff. Um, I don't think anyone's really barbecued for me in, in quite a few years. Um, that might be weird. Um, I don't know if I'd say yes either. <laughs> <laughs> you think you'd yeah, find yourself like... Will you come over? I don't know. <laughs> you think you'd find yourself like picking at it a little or like no I no know. i think i'd be at the at the salad table <laughs> he won't even try it oh no that would be a nightmare if i made a brisket and i invited you can't and you didn't eat I it would, oh, I, I would feel horrible oh, i would man. absolutely try it though you try it okay feedback. yeah yes yes I, I don't i don't know if i'd sit down for and eat like you know six pounds of red meat <laughs> or anything uh, just a nibble What's the most you've ever eaten in one sitting of barbecue? What's the thing? Oh you, gosh, I have no idea. A um, lot. You ever put down probably like, normal normal person portions? Nothing crazy. Okay, so nothing crazy. Okay, I didn't. Know. Yeah, I'm more I into. Know. I really like the process in in cooking it and just the whole. Just love everything about it. I, I don't, you know, after cooking barbecue for 20 years, I don't know that I'm really going to sit down and, you know hunker down with a full plate rib by myself or anything <laughs> no for sure i'll definitely take a bite or two though yeah absolutely it's more so, of a shared yeah, yeah that's a well that's a good point um so what okay so you know you're talking about your love of the art and and i totally uh, you know get that and respect that and that's what you know has made you so successful like what what brought that out I remember hearing this story that you started cooking barbecue like just in your backyard and trying it inviting mm-hmm. people over and getting them going but were you really into brisket before that? 
and you were just trying no. to perfect it or no, not at all. That was, you know, I, my parents had a barbecue joint when I was a kid, uh, for a few years down in Bryan, Texas. Um, and I think that planted the nostalgia for later. Um, but you know, like any good Texan, you know, got it, bought a little offset barbecue pit when my now wife, Stacy, and I got her first little apartment together, went to HEB, bought a brisket, cooked it. I was like, oh, this is really terrible. Um, but I loved doing it. It was so much fun. I had the greatest time like everybody else. That's why anybody gets into this stuff. Sure. Um, but maybe I hit it a, quite a few years before, you know, a lot of the kind of current scene. Um, but yeah, I just really started having a lot of fun with it. And, and what I really appreciated about it was that it's, a, it's an endless battle. Like you can never get it. You can never totally nail it. Like you can do, I can cook the same piece of meat a thousand times in a row. Uh, but there's always something new to learn or there's something, some new little light bulb that's going to go off. Um, and I like it because, you know, it's, it's just such a long process. There's always, there's always learning to be had. That's um, awesome. And that's kind of really, you know, I'm a tinker. I like to learn yeah. stuff. I like to, sure. I like to play around with things. What's something recent that you've adapted uh, or learned about barbecue? Oh gosh. Um, ben... Well, I don't know if there's any like one thing. Um, then digging a lot deeper into what temperature and what process and airflow and relative humidity yield certain results throughout a 12 hour or what however many hour cook process. So that's part of like the troubleshooting the brisket. You can see the different fibers and how they break down at different times um, and the different fats that render in different ways throughout a, a piece of meat. So figuring out like pinpointing like, oh, that was hour three, you were about three degrees too too low on this part of the brisket for two hours wow that's that's my jam that's real fun Holy cow. Um, that and that crazy. again is an endless battle because there's always like oh maybe the myoglobin doesn't react that way <laughs> you start kind of looking in in six months you're like oh no no i proved myself right that worked <laughs> and every brisket's different right yeah, <laughs> exactly every animal just like people is yeah. very different yeah absolutely god that's yeah that's fascinating that's a wow that's a that's so fascinating, man. I love hearing that. Um, you know what I love about barbecue is that uh, I was thinking about this. It's it's not only just a style of food, but it's also an event, right? So like I was asking you, no, earlier, people, herb, either way, right? I love that. Like, what other thing is there? Like, it's nobody says, "Hey, let's go hamburgering," right? It's like, yeah, right, I mean, well, I don't know. You could you could hot dog somewhere, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. That's true. That's true. You could hot dog somewhere. But you know what I mean? It's like, a, yeah, it's, this, right, it's, this, it's this thing, you know, people invite you to a barbecue, right? You get, it's such a, it's such a passionate, um, you know, environment and uh, family and ecosystem, right? This all small world within uh, the industry. And, you know, you, you've actually, man, you know, whether you realize it or not, have really opened the door for a lot of people to get into barbecue, to appreciate barbecue, to uh, just look at it from a different angle. Maybe they hadn't um, or just take it more seriously than they hadn't before. Um, and, I, you know, I think that's fascinating. I, you know, I was reading about your one of your James Beard Awards where you, you were the first person ever nominated for barbecue and you won. I thought that was fascinating, man. Go figure. Dude, right that's, place at the right time. No, that's great, man. I just, I love, I thought, wow, you're the first person ever nominated for barbecue. Like America and barbecue go hand in hand. We haven't like put anybody there for uh, barbecue How did yet? they make it that far <laughs> yeah. <laughs> without giving some barbecue guy a beer award? That's what I thought. I just thought that, that's crazy. Um, what What is it about barbecue that like needed you to step in and show people, wait, there, there's a like a way to do this, you know, well, in a way that people from that in you know from that tier look look at it and go yeah this is something special yeah i think you know i i don't i mean again i don't know if know, i worded I that right the right the right place at the right time you know but yeah. i think a lot of that had to do with the internet you know and how homogenized individual food scenes became so quickly with like bloggers and and all this stuff you know i think like right when food blogging really started was right when we opened so that kind of open the door for, oh, for wow. tons of stuff. But, you know, before that barbecue, obviously it's been around forever. I mean, it, it comes from all cultures and, and, you know, it's, you know, there's it's the first very, food, isn't it? Very isn't it the first history. food. It has to be. Uh, it's, it's close. I mean, what else I mean, was, 
I guess raw food, but yeah. once they started to cook, that's barbecue, right? Once I threw it on the fire. Pretty much. Um, you know, it came from so many different cultures and stuff, but yeah. it was always localized because, you know, they didn't have internet. They didn't, people didn't travel back in the day. So you get hickory and you've got hogs over here. You've got oak and cows down here. And then you've got chickens over here and you've got pecan and, you know, you've got all these different woods and all these different animals. So, and all these different cultures that come in, like, well, we cook them on straight coals. Well, we cook it in the ground. Well, we cook it in a weird, you know, offset cooker that we built, you know, or like a brick pit and then shovel the coals, you know, like they do up in the Carolinas and stuff. Um, but I think with the internet, all that stuff just kind of, everybody started noticing all these other barbecue scenes um, a little bit. And really, you know, we had opened up about that same time and uh, got noticed pretty quickly, I guess. So I guess, you know, maybe just gave, gave everyone something to be like, oh, there's, yeah. there's some barbecue fella somewhere doing something though you know i i think maybe as as you know everybody here in america everybody's knowledge of barbecue started creeping up that's kind of when the beards be like oh this is this is like a real this is like it's a, thing. a real thing yeah this is a real thing well I, you know a friend of mine told me a story one time that she was in new york um was at some sort of event where you were serving there were lots of people serving they had tents i don't know what it was but there was some um iron chefs that had tents too and they were serving and they didn't have any line but you had a lot they she said you had a line so long and like every, even the chefs the other chefs were wanting to like get your food it was like this crazy uh, moment insane. yeah yeah it, it, you know and what, me being you, the guy behind the table dealing with all that <laughs> like oh my god what crazy. is it what is it world I mean, what is it? What in your mind, like what what do you think? Because I know people like to assume what they think has made you successful, right? They they like to put it, you know, whether it be whatever your branding, the the flavor, it's just the best, uh, whatever however you've done. What do you think has is the reason, you know, that people love your barbecue so much? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it probably doesn't hurt that I'm a fairly nice guy. So <laughs> I think that's a good start. Yeah. Um, our flavors are so simple and, you know, we just use salt and pepper and really clean wood, like really clean fires and stuff. Um, so there's nothing complicated there. It's just, you know, I, I think the devil's in the details, you know, and I'm, I'm such a details guy on all that stuff. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that's what people like. Um, you know, I will say, I, I think it's pretty darn good. Oh, it's um, delicious. It's delicious. I mean, I've had it. It's, it's frankly, it's, I mean, but, it's, uh, yeah, it's delicious. I don't know. Delicious. I think. I don't know. It's easy to get excited about food. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, that's, you make a good point about the blogs and the internet, and, and that really blew up the food scenes in a lot of ways, right? Just it, it yeah. makes people... I mean, if you think about, like, really... Yeah, I've had several conversations with, with friends about this, but, like, 2008, 2009, 2010, when, you know, like, the food scene as we now know it was really kicking into high gear. I mean, you've got, like, you know, Mission Chinese down in, in San Francisco. you got, you know, Andy's Pock Pock up in Portland, like, all these little places, Franklin Barbecue down here, you know, all these little places that were opening up and just people that like to make food, real small, tiny little places, not like a huge concept or anything. Yeah. But the way that the scene kind of all these things were happening at the same time and, um, you know, really, really took off. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think um, I think really it's I mean, again, you know, who am I? But I, I think it is your approach to just the simplicity of it and not overcomplicating it uh, when it comes to barbecue, because that seems to be what most people do when they get when they want to barbecue. They want to put all kinds of rubs and all kinds of this and all kinds of that. Yeah. And yeah, and and that's all real right. standard stuff from from a long time ago. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, when you're cooking anything that the the, the um, you know, the temptation is to start, oh, let me add a little this, a little that, and and that little this, little that starts to add up and it and, and it, you know, ruins the dish. Uh mm -hmm. right. Can't focus on any any one flavor. It's and, very confusing. Very yeah, quickly. yeah. It, it's a it's a it's an explosion for the palate. And uh, you know, uh, most people don't even have trained palates to, you know, finesse those things to right to sort of even understand why your barbecue is so good. They're just like, no, it's good, but not can't can't really figure out why why yeah. it's melting in their mouth, you know. Uh, no, it's fascinating. I, I saw a video of you like explaining how to trim the brisket. I got to say, it's like 
I wasn't expected to be as fascinated with the videos I was because honestly, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be boring. That's what I thought. No offense. I was just like, oh, yeah. no, well, I can't, no, I can't watch this. It's not supposed to be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was like, oh, no, this isn't going to be good. I don't know if I can watch this. And then sure enough, you made it somehow interesting just because I was like, I've never seen anyone take this so seriously. <laughs> like, right? what like, is wrong with this guy? <laughs> no, in a good way. In a good way. Like, it's so, it's, you know, just mad respect. I wish I had that. When I was cooking, I wish I had that uh, in me. I always wanted to make good dishes and, you know, always respected what, what I was doing. Uh, for sure. But, you know, I mean, that's what say, sets you apart. That's that's just basically what it is. You know, I think it's hey, awesome. I like to try to make things perfect. Yeah. I, look, I I totally uh, relate to that in, in other ways, uh, for sure. So I get it. And you've you've succeeded. Um, OK, so let's say you're a new. Uh, l- let's say you're well, like yourself uh, 20 years ago, you're, you're sitting at home right now. And you think, OK, I got this, you know, my, my neighbors, my friends, they love my barbecue. I want to open up a spot. Uh, what, what's the I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but maybe just one quick sentence. What would be your advice to that person? You know, it, this is harder to pull off now than it, it was, you know, 10 plus years ago for sure. But I think just being OK to start small, you know, really, if you start on such a small scale, you know, just enough to pay your bills and kind of survive. But, you know, you don't necessarily need to go out and like, oh, I got to find investors. I need this new, <laughs> huge, shiny building in a great neighborhood. It's like, no, nah, just, you know, because if you fail at something big, it's going to be an epic fail. If you yeah. fail on a little like food trailer, it's not that big of a deal. Like you can recover from that hopefully pretty quickly, Yeah, you know. Um, and not put a lot of other people out, um, you know, with, you know, lost money and, and stuff. But sure. I think, you know, something starts small enough where you can really oversee all the details. You know, if it's a one, two, three man show, you're going to be putting out a much better stuff. And then, you know, if you only feed 20 people a day, 100 people a day, 300 people a day, whatever, you know, and you're really cranking out of something small, like maybe it's just a little hole in the wall that you leased out. Maybe it's a trailer, maybe it's a truck, maybe just whatever you can easily afford. Um, you know, I think that's really the biggest thing for for me and the best advice um, is it don't, you know, don't put your goals so far out of reach that they're completely unobtainable. You sure. know, take little baby steps and then just kind of work up. Wow, that's great advice. Yeah, that's great advice. Okay, y'all, if you're listening, that's it. Um, that's the advice right there. Um, what, what, uh, you, you did this master class, uh, that I saw for, for barbecue. How, how was that? Um, were, were you like a little worried to do that? I'm curious, like your thoughts on it. Were you nervous or it, it's, uh, I saw a couple uh, videos actually that my friend had bought the master class. Uh, it's phenomenal, but I'm just, it's a, that's a lot. I mean, Man, that's a it was big a, it was really big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, to date, that was their largest production. And that was the first time they'd ever shot anything only outdoors. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> we did it. We shot wow. that at our old uh, welding shop out in Bastrop and, um, you know, under the pine trees. And, you know, we had like a house and kitchen, all that stuff out there. <clears throat> but um, yeah, they they asked. Of course, I knew Masterclass. I was super excited about it. Um, so it was total no brainer. Uh, heck, yeah, I want to do that. That's <laughs> insane. Um, those guys are so good at what they do. Um, and I wasn't really too nervous. We were wrapping up the second book. Um, the night before wrapping up all the photography, stayed up real late, jumped in the truck at like, you know, 4 a.m., drove out to Bastrop and then did masterclass. But I did it unscripted. Um, oh, I just kind of made, it, made it up as I went. Um, what? And I'm, a, I'm a super <laughs> prepper, but if I had kind of prepared, no, I had like a basic outline and I had yeah. out like, OK, it'll take this many hours to cook this, but we're going to cook it in real time. And this is about when things are going to happen. We're just going to have to wing it, fly by the seat of our pants a little bit. Um, and they were like, yeah, that sounds great. We got full confidence in you. If you can, you got this. I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> um, but, you know, if I had written out all the stuff I wanted to talk about, I would have gotten so freaked out and so nervous about it. It was like, I'm just going to go into it blindly. I'm going to riff my way through it. I'm going to make it up. And I did. And it was great. Uh, but I didn't get nervous until I came over the uh, hill on the highway and I started seeing all the production signs. I'm like, oh, this might be bigger than I thought. <laughs> and I turned on the screen, there's like semi grip trucks lining, you know, like a half mile on this road. Oh my God. And like a giant tent for craft services and stuff. Like, oh my God, <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? And yeah, yeah, I felt sick to my stomach. 
<laughs> you um, crushed it. You crushed it. Was it was like, about five That's minutes crazy. in. I was like, all right, you guys are great. Uh, but they had a 55 person crew. It was huge. Wow. That's insane. Massive. Yeah, that's massive. No, you crushed it. I cannot believe you winged most of that. I, I can't even believe that. That's I mean, that's I insane. do talk about barbecue a lot, so it wasn't that's a part true. Of it, but, that's true. I mean, that's um, a good point. Uh that, yeah, that's a good point. Did did it make you feel you know what it kind of reminded me of was the the PBS show you had? Yeah. That's the kind of feel, you know, it, it sort yeah, of well, had it's, it's me. It's all I've got. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there ain't nothing else. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> no, man, that's great. Uh, what what about that PBS show? You ever thought about bringing that back? Yeah, I kind of think, you know, I kind of go back and forth. On one hand, I'm, it's really nice not being super duper busy. And oh, over the course of the pandemic, you know, we've worked a lot less like most people did. Um, but it's been really nice getting to spend time with the kiddo and, and hanging out yeah. with the fam and stuff. And of course, you know, back when we were doing that show, we were doing doing a construction of the smokehouse here at the restaurant. I was still cooking ribs at midnight. We were working on the first book and doing a show and had a newborn baby. Oh my God. All within like, you know, the three months of that summer. And it was, you know, I was working a hundred, 120 hours a week, you know? Um, and I don't know that I'm quite willing to go back to doing the show uh, for that reason. But on the other hand, you know, think about, the show it was like ah it would be really so much fun to do a second season so maybe one of these days maybe one absolutely. of these days but I'd, I'd like to it was a lot of fun oh dude absolutely. and i've learned a lot since then too i think i could almost redo that entire season and make it 20 times better than it was that's it revisit it right that's all it is revisit it i love that that's uh that's that i'll just voice over idea. the entire uh <laughs> yeah yeah hey that's how it <laughs> That's a way around it. Hey, you know, they got this, uh, what's that, deep fake shit? Have you ever seen that stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. That on, might be expensive. Oh, I think I'm just going for old Kung Fu movies. <laughs> hey, I like that, too. I like that. Hey, you could, you know what you could do, what everybody's doing, what this is right here, a podcast. There I mean, you go. I'm sure you've been asked to do a podcast, get a podcast, or you've thought now, about it, right? No one really asked me to do anything because everybody knows I'll say no. <laughs> They're like, well, if you want to do a podcast, you just do a podcast. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, look, podcasts are a lot of work. People don't understand how much. Oh, there's a this. lot of stuff that goes into that. Yeah. 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 It's it's a full. I mean, this is my full time job. It definitely, uh, you know, it's not just me. There's a lot of people where it's a lot of, uh, it, you know what it is? Just like the restaurant industry, you're planning. It's all about you've got to plan all this stuff I'm and you got to be ahead. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's all. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Okay, so everybody knows you were in the movie Chef. You, you killed it. It's a great scene. I'm curious how you got in that movie and what did you think of the movie after you saw it? Because that's, you know, they, they take some, I mean, it's Hollywood, right? I get it. It's a film. I love the film, but of course they take some, uh, I don't know the word. Um, uh, they, they, it's, you know, running a food truck's a little bit different than that. In real life. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it took the grit out of it. But, you know, really, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's not COVID. Um, <laughs> you know, Fabro is such a good dude. And and that was really kind of his passion project. Um, and I thought he did such a good job. And, you know, none of that stuff was really fake. I mean, like, even to the point, like, you know, when they came to the restaurant, we picked out the briskets. Um those were literally the two briskets that went to the taco truck later on that night to use. Like there's oh, no wow. time in anything like that was, they're just kind of riffing their way through it. They're like, Hey, let's do this. Kind of got an idea for this. Yeah. I like that. Let's do that. All right, cool, man. And he just shot it as they went. You know, I think he had a, kind of like the master class thing, had a loose guideline, uh, but really they kind of made up a lot of stuff, you know, on the fly. Um, wow. And I think that wow. kind of carried through and made it feel really organic and natural. Um, but, you know, that, that's how that guy rolls. I mean, he's, he's so good at what he does um, and such a nice guy and also a huge food nerd and also a huge barbecue nerd. Um, so it seemed like a good fit. It was very yeah, happy. Absolutely. I mean, he's got um, that food. show on Netflix, too, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's all into food. Yeah, I love that. I love anybody that, uh, you know, brings to light, right, gets into food and then starts bringing to light the industry. Like, I'm all about that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, super it. good, dude. Uh, but really, the way it came up is, uh, I guess he was eating lunch here one day, and he kind of mentions like, "Hey, I'm working on got an idea for a movie, kind of working on." 
It's like, yeah, 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 okay, okay, sure. What, what are you thinking? It's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, that sounds like fun. It's like, well, you want to, you want to do something with it? I'm like, yeah, sure. Shoot me an email. <laughs> you know, talked about it. And it's like, so I think we're going to be driving back from Miami on, or coming back from New Orleans on this day. I'm like, okay, well, I'll save you two briskets. We'll figure it out when you get here. Uh, show up at show up at three o'clock after the line's gone. Um, just scoop in right at the end of lunch. And that's what they did. <laughs> Dude, that is hilarious. <laughs> super that, off the cuff. I um, mean, that is more crazy. So for me than them, but it was yeah. it was well done. I didn't realize they moved through the production like in the movie. It was for real. Like there's that's no crazy. like studio vacant it. I didn't know that. They they picked up a truck there and they drove it back with a small production crew. Wow. Um, Yeah. Wow. That's, I got a whole new level of respect for that film now. I mean, I already loved it, right? I mean, look, any, you know, anyone who has a food truck, someone's going to mention to you, oh, have you seen Chef, right? I mean, that's a first, at least for me, like everyone always asking that. The only scene I have a problem with, and not really even a problem, again, it's a movie, it's fantastic. And I love John Leguizamo, first of all. He's like one of my favorite actors ever. He is so, I love that guy so much, man. It's, I'm Latino too. So it's that Latino bond, baby. I love it. Um, but the scene where they clean out the food truck in like an afternoon, right? With the guy, it's oh like, my okay, God, that would have taken that's a week. It, that's what I sound like. Listen, that's the one scene yeah, that really, because the there's no way. Production is expensive. You got to shorten yeah. that stuff. <laughs> I mean, of course, like you don't want to show 50, you know, 30 minutes of the movie, like uh, uh, one act of them cleaning the food truck, right? I get it. You need to, the scene was great. But, but it's like watching me trim a brisket. I'm like, all right, enough yeah. is enough. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> totally. No, because I remember cleaning out my food truck. Yo, that took forever like that was dirty and nasty it's like listen it's not going to happen in an afternoon with a six pack of uh, topo chicos um i mean it'd be great if that's how what but no uh maybe no, it's all back. yeah maybe it's all back for sure no the film was great man uh, it really was and um that film will live on in infamy forever there, first of all there's just not many films about the industry as a whole yeah. well and it was I, a really cool like feel-good movie too yeah so it's absolutely be, you know sure Sure. Well, I felt like even the scenes he showed, uh, you know, working in the restaurant, that that felt very real, man. They they shot that yeah, so well, well. And, and you know, on the intro of that, you know, it's got all the super, super tight shots of the knife work. That's yeah. really fun. Like he really been, wow. like working on his knife skills for like a year before that at home, he would just sit there and just chop a bunch of vegetables and he got really good at it. He's a really good cook. Um, but that was Dude. really him. Like, like he wanted it to be so legit. It's like, I'm like, this is, like really like my story um i'm doing this um and i think that's super cool and you know i've done uh events with them we i have a food festival here in austin called hot luck uh, that happens yeah. on memorial day weekend and the first hot luck i think it was in that tv show that he did um maybe it's called chef also i hadn't hadn't really watched it i guess um chef's you know. table maybe oh gosh no I no that's the name oh that's a um, different one yeah yeah whatever it is we'll put a <laughs> link in the description for sure <laughs> um but, uh, you know, so they were at the festival, you know, so we've actually stayed in touch since the movie show. I'm like, hey, I'm doing this festival. You guys want to like, let's wrap a trailer, uh, you know, food truck and park that thing here for the fest. Um, and we ended up cooking together and, you know, Roy came out and we did, you know, they cooked here at the restaurant uh, for one of the events and stuff like that. And, you know, I've hung out with uh, with Fabro in L.A. doing pop ups and stuff since. So, yeah, good. Awesome. Super good, dude. Real legit. No, that's awesome. No, I just I love that he's uh, took took it so seriously and and really uh, he did it right. He did it right, man. I, honestly, I can't think of another film that really shows like working in a kitchen for real. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe Burnt with Bradley Cooper has some scenes that that could work, but that was a little over either. the top for me. Like that seemed too. I've worked in fine dining Might restaurants. Might a little close to home. I don't yeah. know that I'm <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I've not seen it. I don't know what's going on in there, but it's it's a it's a different. It seems style like watching of, work, though. <laughs> yeah, it really is. That's why I didn't like it either. I was like, dude, this is like I'm at work. I'm pissed off. I'm like, I'm like, angry. I want to watch yeah. a movie about something that I don't get to do usually. <laughs> totally, like, like superhero. Yes, exactly. Like, when's the next Fast and Furious coming out? You know, right? Like, I'm with you. I'm with you. Do you watch any of the UFC stuff? Do you see mm-hmm. any of the fights going? Oh, you don't watch any of that stuff? No uh right. no not don't get a lot of tv time in yeah well that makes sense uh for sure absolutely well what's the last movie you saw you liked or tv show or you know we finally uh we went on vacation uh a couple weeks ago for two weeks 
and uh, finally had time to start watching The Mandalorian. Oh, nice. What'd you I think? Five episodes in. On the first season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Se- Got it. Yeah, it Got might it. take us a year to fit, to get through it. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, but that's how much TV time we get. That, right on. That's wow. Our <laughs> <laughs> that's what I yeah, delayed by a couple of years. I just finished like, Sopranos a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, I watched the finale of Cheers last night. Oh, great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's my norm. <laughs> that's a dude. That's hilarious. Wow. Um, that's funny. Well, okay. Before we go, Aaron, I, I don't know if there was any, um, you know, I always like to get people to uh, shout out some uh, places to eat in, in Texas. You know, obviously you have your own place, but I don't know if there was any other places you wanted to, to name drop or any other uh, spots you wanted to shout out for people to go to. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like I hadn't really been eating out much over the past year and a half. <laughs> um, you know, but here in Austin, I mean, our, our old faithful is always like Uchiko and Uchi and, and stuff. Um, Lenoir is a great place here in Austin, down on uh, oh, yeah. South First. Suerte, yeah. of course. El Dorado is kind of a neighborhood, best darn Tex-Mex in Austin. Um, you know, but yeah, we kind of got our, our little neighborhood spots and stuff, but yeah, there's a lot of good food. If I if I knew this was coming, I would have prepped a list. My you bad. Know, my bad. Oh my god, uh, there's just so many places I can't think of any of them. I know, I know. Well, it's like, I what's like your to put. Pop- I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, some people have tattoos, right, of their Hanson. favorite band. Yeah, yeah, Hanson. I mean, hey, listen, I like anything if it's got a good beat. Um, well, Aaron, is there anything I didn't bring up or anything I didn't mention? I want to make sure, um, you know, we covered everything. I don't want to make sure. I can't. Yeah. You know, there's so many things going on again on spot. I can't think of anything. Right on. Um, okay. So Laurel. Yeah. Laurel's open in Dallas already. Laurel's so open. go check uh, it out. Over uh, oh, Fr- Franklin's. Uh, I read y- y'all are opening your full dining room on September 2nd. September 1st. September 1st. My bad. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be reopening. And- we're about to shut down for, you know, our 14 day annual closure and maintenance extravaganza. Um, and then we'll reopen for a couple of weeks, reset the place over a weekend and reopen. Looking forward to high fives and hugs. That's for sure. Yeah. So this will be back to normal, just like it was before the pandemic. But we'll see what normal looks like. But yeah, yeah. We'll, as well, close to it as we can get. Good point. Good point. Yeah. That, there that will be barbecue. Yeah, right on. Right. That's what that's what people want to know. Will there be barbecue? There will be right? food. <laughs> yeah, there will be food. Okay, Aaron. Well, listen, man. This was so so much fun, man. I really enjoyed this. Um, Heck yeah, good talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah. Uh, oh, real quick. Um, uh, ha, ha, just let people know how they can stay in contact with you, either online or the Franklin stuff. Whatever you want to get, we'll put links in the description. But is there any social media you want to shout out? We don't really so. Sh- too much <laughs> we're cool man just I come like visit it. just say hi it's just okay. say hi come get some barbecue um, you know i think that you know franklinbbq.com is the website and all updates you know we put up on there um we don't i need to get better at the social media stuff nobody we just don't really mess with it you know it's not i got it thing. um and then you know the franklin bbq pits uh dot com uh which has kind of got some stuff going on these days and about to you know we're we're, we've been working pretty hard on it this pandemic um but yeah that's about it just the websites you know we have we do have a a twitter we do have an instagram i couldn't tell you what they are Um, Uh, we'll put the links down there in the description for them yeah no that's awesome well again man thank you so much um i hope you have a good rest of the week um and yeah, hope everything goes well with the uh, with the opening and the maintenance and uh, everything with the with the opening of uh, Franklin's uh, when that Absolutely. comes it's in September. It's gonna be great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Back to it. Back to it. Well, thanks again, Heck, yeah. Aaron. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, brother. Absolutely. Have a good one. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show: the end credits. This is everyone responsible for making the show happen. Executive producer, Sebastian Sauerborn. Podcast manager, Nevena Ponovich. Marketing manager, Caroline Grape. Video and audio editors, Danilo Vojnov and Pavel Sebastianovich. Thumbnail designer, Marco Vukovic. Social media manager, Ursa Rusman. Guest outreach, Corey Menciez. Designing image quotes, Jay Apuya. Social media videos, Labri Fernandez. Outreach support, 
Yonet Del Mundo. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. <music>